broad terms, have produced over a thousand tonnes of product you know, in multiple different markets with lots of different uh, potential products. So these things are never simple for everybody, but we do have good systems. But I mean, again, that's part of the inquiry is to go away and ask the question about our tracking and tracing systems and what's happening in you know, the whole overall support of the area industry. So, Prime Minister, have you, have you consulted with the opposition about the passage of this bill urgently? Yes, they have. That's a no, well, that's labor, yes, what about um, minor start parties? It's not going under urgency, though, is it? No, I don't think so. Um, I need to check that, actually. Is, Sorry, check that. is there going to be an SOP? Yes, there will be an SOP for the correspondence. And what's going to be in the SOP? Uh, I'll leave them spelled out for you, but there's, there's a few bits and pieces. There's some technical points around, I think, the original legislation says minister and not ministers, and there's, there's a number of things like that. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think we're going to sort of mix these things outside of that parts B and C. Look at the broader dairy industry, but I, I don't think that's arguing that this particular issue of Westland um, should be should be sort of bound into part A, if you like, of the of the inquiry. Have you had any late discussions with Winston Peters regarding the GCC bill and expecting to put forward an ESA that you might might support? Um, no, I mean, look, we've on numerous occasions actually sort of reached out there, but. Prime Minister, this afternoon or this evening in Auckland, there's going to be a great a large number of people going to gather at the Town Hall to talk about the GCSB bill and to talk about their opposition to it. Do you have anything to say to those people? Oh, just that, you know, I think they can take great confidence that legislation is both necessary, um, it's well balanced, it's a tidy up of the previous legislation that Labor passed, and I think there will always be a, a point where. Uh, you know, privacy intersects with national security, but I think we've got that point out right. Prime Minister, at the, at the National Party conference, um, Judith Collins raised the, the idea, well, suggested that there would there'd been some cooperation between Ofcans or between the child abuse teams and the GCSB around. Are you aware of, of what she was referring to? I wasn't there when she said it. So she, so she said it on television. I mean, one of the things that we, that, that some people have criticised the passage of this bill and the way that it's being passed around is that the police haven't given any evidence of their use of the GCSB and there's no clarity on what use the GCSB has made of, or the police has made of the GCSB. Well, if you look at the 88 individuals in the 50 plus something cases... They're, they're all SIS cases, they're not police cases. No, that's not right. Of the 88 individuals in the 50 plus something cases in the GC in the Rebecca Kitteridge report, the bulk of them were SIS, but some were police, I think, and some were defensive. So, how often has there been cooperation between the police and the GCSB, to your knowledge? I don't think that would be. So, Prime Minister, one of the issues that, that the public. I've got to tell you guys, I've got 30 minutes. Yeah, I don't mind answering Alistair's questions in totality, it's your time. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here at 4 30. Yeah. Okay, so section 8A, uh, number part B, or part 2 says um, that, that um, without limiting in paragraph 8, to do everything that is necessary to desire to protect the security and integrity of communications and information infrastructures. So it's about the protection of information, not about going into information. Then if you go to section 15A, so basically 8A sets up a function, which is protection, 15A, which is the warrant, says it has to apply to a function. And then if you look at 15C, that backs that up. So it's not possible on the advice I've had, um, as, as a result of this, um, to necessarily go into all of the content. And what we've made quite clear is that the warrants that we will be issuing, assuming one is even issued at the request of a private company uh, for cyber security, will be about protection of information, not about accessing content as it relates to New Zealand. So why can't, why can't you, why can't you state to have those protections in terms of looking at the actual content that you do? Because it gets really, really technical, but um, essentially the way to think through this is that if we, if, if there was a private company in New Zealand 
and that company, with the agreement of the GCSB, decided that we would provide cyber security protection. In my view, um, and that's the advice I have from the lead, from lawyers, is that 8A, 15A and 15C stop uh, the ability to look at content. Um, that's certainly the way the warrants will be signed in relation to that. Do those topics already look at metadata? Uh, metadata, no, not necessarily. But content, yes. Um, depending on what definition you have of metadata, because that, of course, also gets extremely broad. may not be in the context that you would think of metadata, the way we did with Peter Dunn, which was very specific, but a very, very technical, concrete, very broad definition of metadata. They can look at metadata. Why that not the whole problem? The whole problem no, this is the point, though, is that if, if there was a... You, you, the way to think about this is, where we want to look at content, we use the assistance powers under 8C. Eight, eight where we want to protect and, and actually rather than access information, we use 8A. But basically what happened was if we ultimately, through looking at all of that, filtered out, decided we did want to look at the content, we would probably use 8B and look at the foreign powers, because these are foreign cyber security attacks on New Zealand. But where it gets really technical is it's not physically impossible to clone a New Zealand system and to use that to attack you. Now, in that instance, we would demand that they came back to us and issued yet another warrant because with the, with the agreement of that individual. So it's not physically impossible. But the provisions under cyber security are not about accessing content. They are about protecting content. And will there be, when there's the oversight that's put in place, will the oversight provisions enable us to know that Correct, yes, because what happens is, as we've, as we've agreed, at the ISC, every year there'll be a summary of the warrants that are signed. Not the individual warrant, but the number of warrants in a category. And on that committee sits the Leader of the Opposition and his or her nominee, um, plus obviously the government members. And at that committee, someone will go to ask the very obvious question. So when it comes to cyber security, have any warrants been issued? That, that sought to see, sought to look at content for New Zealanders. Ought the GCSB to have any responsibility to protect us from surveillance of our data by American authorities or by British authorities or by Australian authorities using PRISM and X Keyscore and so forth? Uh, well, I'm not going to go into the overall bits of it because you have to take it where possible. But, but what I'd say to you is that, that we are trying to protect, and we have quite good reason to want to do that, so foreign cyber attacks on New Zealand infrastructure. So in fact, but if we were to offer the service to the companies, which is what's really proposed in the legislation, I'd be amazed if those companies didn't want to do that. And the basic reason being that essentially, by offering, as I explained on Campbell Live, the equivalent of a Norton antivirus, what we're actually offering is a service which is light years above that so because we have the understanding and the capabilities. You've to misunderstood my question. My question is, New Zealanders' data, companies in New Zealand who use Google Documents and Google, Google Mail and anything to do with Google, the US government has access to their private files. So do US contractors working for the NSA. Does the GCSB have a responsibility to protect New Zealanders from that threat? Well, it would we have the responsibility to protect New Zealanders if we choose to, because this would be under warrant because we chose to do so and the company agreed for us to do so against credible threats. You you can decide whether you think that's a threat and I can offer my own view of whether I think it's a threat and might be different. So what what is your view? So what is your view? What is your view on whether that's a threat? Well, I'm not really interested in going back to the silly question. Yeah, they require a warrant. So what happens is under under the provisions of Section 8A for cyber security, that's warranted behaviour. And that's why 15A applies. Right. So they'll have to go along, let's take a hypothetical example, and say, here's Company A. And for whatever reason, Company A is of national significance with either um, information or IP, which we believe needs to be protected. They have to get a warrant. GCSB would have to get a warrant to assist them, and that warrant would have to be signed by the Commissioner, 
and by myself with oversight from the inspector. And that's because of a number of reasons, but one of them is because in the very broadest sense of the word, there's metadata there. But it's, without going into the finer details of it, it's not metadata like Peter Dunn's definition of metadata. But in the purest, purest sense of the word, it's metadata. And you have to Yes. Why? Uh, well, um, we're at the, we'll be at the sort of finishing flag, so I might as well take the opportunity I happen to be here. So, um, as I said to you, because you asked me on a few occasions whether I'd be giving a, you know, you know giving a particular speech, I'm now I might as well take the opportunity because I'm here to read it in. Anyone could read it into the record, but yes, we will, and we'll be spelling out all the things that we've said because any judge, um, if, if this was ever tested in court, will use the hands up and third reading speech to actually look at what the intent of Parliament was. And so I will put on the record what my intentions are in relation to those warrants, what my belief is around these sections and how the cyber security applies, uh, and also um, uh, you know, our understanding of what the law is, is doing. Prime Minister, have you? Under this law, under this law, Prime Minister, under the tax law, um, can you rule out that sort of um, spying on the data of the everyday Well, you could mean anything by that, but if, if the question you are asking is, will there be wholesale surveillance of people's emails, where they receive those emails from, and what the content of those emails, I can categorically draw that out. But effectively, if we were providing cyber security protection over an entity for which there was a warrant, XYZ company, it essentially flows through a filter, and as it flows through that filter, it doesn't record for anything other than a hundredth of a second. It's looking for the, the viruses which are coming into the system. It's not looking at the content, it's not looking at who sent the email, it's simply looking for the viruses. And we don't record, or under that scenario, we wouldn't record where the emails came from, you know, who got them, any of that sort of stuff. It's just literally like pouring water through our filter. And if you go straight through the filter, nothing is recorded but for you know, a nanosecond, it, you know, technically, you know, it's going through that filter. And under the very broadest definition of metadata, a lawyer will tell you that's metadata. Prime Minister, <laughs> Prime Minister numerous legal jurists have, have informed us publicly that they disagree with you wholeheartedly about that, that you are taking broad powers which allow you to invade privacy at a wholesale level. And you're saying that all those people are wrong. On top of that, we also have the situation that two is investigations question? that you were responsible well, for. This is a question. This is a question. This, okay, this is a question. Oh, this is a question. Let, okay, I'll give you the answer. Well, you yes, know, you haven't heard the, the question yet. No, no, I don't know what No, you can just interrupt like you did John Campbell, or I can ask the question. Thanks very much, guys.